this is Tally Ho, a Choice of Games game, which uh, is an interactive fiction, which is all text-based and we'll be making various choices. I know this game really well. It's pretty fun. Uh, it's inspired by P.G. Woodhouse's works. Only a perfect servant can solve a perfect mess. Being the perfect gentleman's gentleman or lady's lady doesn't make you an angel. Can you untangle your employer's naughtiest problems with elegance and unruffled grace? Asterisk. As the valet or lady's maid of Rory Wintermint, you'll go head to head with recalcitrant ants, light handed house guests, manage a fox hunt, and corral exotic birds. Oh, yeah, there are peacocks, or, well, peafowl in here. Excellent. Yes. Three of them. One of them's a peacock. Tally Ho is, <laughs> Tally Ho is a 600,000 word. That's the total, you know, for every play through. So we're not going to be reading 600,000 words. Okay. Tally Ho is a 600,000 word interactive comedy of manners by Craig Sa I don't know how he pronounces his name, actually. I'll just guess Sagal? and hope he's not offended. Uh, comedy of manners by Craig Seagal, or however he says it. Please don't hate me. <laughs> Where your choices control the story. It's entirely text-based, without graphics or sound effect, and fueled by the vast, unstoppable power of your imagination. That's the standard choice of games boilerplate there, actually. They're all that. It's England between the wars, and the 1920s are roaring. When your employer, a proper young gentleman or lady named Rory Wintermint, is summoned to their aunt's, Aunt Primrose's country house Ritornello for a weekend, it's up to you to make everything run smoothly. Or not! Glide gracefully between Ooh. the scenes to arrange everything from the flowers to their love life, or leave Rory to their own devices as you pursue crime, adventure, and romance. Will you lie, cheat, and steal to ensure your employer's happiness, or will you insist upon personal integrity? Play as male, female, or non-binary, gay or straight. Or bi, actually. I mean, whatever. Uh, help Rory sort out their love life. Or sabotage it utterly. Solve the case of a mysterious sneak thief. Or join them on a crime spree. Aid spies, evade the law, calm flighty flappers, and unruffle Aunt Primrose. Win an exotic animal show in a boat race, fairly or cheat. Dance the Lindy Hop or a grateful, graceful waltz, or just tut disapprovingly. Ride trains, motorcycles, zip lines, bicycles, horses, and rusty jalopies. Jazz it up in the jazz age, or remain aloof and cool as a cucumber. You'll be swinging from the chandeliers or serving the can canapes in this madcap but altogether elegant c comedy. Chapter 1, At Your Service Standing at the front window of your employer's flat, you take a moment's respite from your cleaning tasks to enjoy the sights and sounds of a late October afternoon in the better part of London. A cool breeze wafts through the window almost playfully, as if to say all is well with the world, but the moment does not last as a groan issues from the master bedroom, followed by a muffled crash and then a sort of whimper. Your employer, Rory Wintermint, was out quite late last night and was helped back to the flat by some friends in what might be termed an impaired state after an evening's carousing. You have taken advantage of the morning's quiet to do some tidying, all of the ironing, and the dishes. Now it is late afternoon and your employer appears to have finally awakened. Another groan and some incoherent gurgles emerge as you stride to the kitchen and prepare Rory's tray. What is on the tray you have prepared? Oh, our first Ooh. our first choice, that's a food choice. They, they These are different types of personalities, though. A hearty platter of seeded rye toast with butter, three link sausages, four scrambled Dang. eggs with a dash of hot pepper, and two Whoa. large mugs of extraordinarily strong black coffee. It sounds like a little much. A calming cup of chamomile tea and an antacid tablet. A cocktail cunningly designed to ease Rory's hangover. An attractive iris in a bud vase and a cup of fragrant oolong tea. I would go with oh. Mm. I am sorry, but mm is not an option. Do we want to take turns making choices? Like I was somebody... thinking about that. Well, I have a good feeling about chamomile tea. 
Uh, is yeah, we'll, that, we'll say okay? Callie's picking for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then Emily, you can pick next. Okay. Oh, and th- well, this is our gender choice. Um, oh. So th- Emily, you get to choose the gender. Uh, and I'm, I'll just also note um, our employer, Rory. Yeah, this is this also determines Rory's gender. Yeah, it's like I think generally we can switch off on choices, but on the more important choices, uh, we can discuss a bit. Like I yeah. think this is one of the more important choices. So, what exactly are you recommending, Ben? Because I don't particularly have an opinion. I don't care too much which way we go. Hmm. I mean, I'm just biased because I think Rory is really cute. And so I like Rory being male because I like males. Oh, I also need to read this. You suspect that the sensitive state of Rory's stomach this morning will require a comforting cup of tea and a medicinal remedy. You began working for Rory about five years ago when you entered an advertisement in the back of a fashionable monthly magazine asking for... Flip a coin. Uh, what happened to my coin? There it is. Um, it landed on non-binary. Okay. Because it was the side of the coin that doesn't have a man on it. Oh, I see. I was going to say, like, what kind of coin has non-binary on it? <laughs> okay. Okay. We are a non-binary gentleman's servant. This way we also get to test whether there are any pronoun mishaps, in which case I can report it to the author. Okay. Rory, min- w- I have no tongue. Good start. <laughs> Fortunately, this isn't animated, so we can cut things out. <laughs> Rory Wintermint was a young man of the leisure class, known among those in the service as a person of whom something might be made if the right gentleman's servant took him in hand firmly. The advertised position noted that the position would require some simple cooking and light housekeeping, in addition to maining Rory's sartorial elegance. As the position looked acceptable, and you were presently in search of gainful employment after leaving the Signet Signet family's employ, you wrote a letter of interest and were gratified to receive a request for an interview. The interview, as you recall, was not a grueling one. Rory was sitting at his piano, idly playing the first few notes of a popular tune, sipping a clear cocktail, and glancing briefly at the letter you had written. Uh, let's see, who will be Rory? Uh, Rory, who wants to be, uh... Actually, I'm thinking maybe, maybe Emily sort of just kind of befuddled... You you know Jeeves and Worcester. The the Jeez, birdie. Thanks, kind of. Kind I'm of not saying you're befuddled. I'm just thinking that he. I'm just thinking. Mostly, I'm thinking he interacts with some people I want Callie to voice. To be honest. Okay. That's uh, fine. But you do have um, a calm, a calming voice, and you also know what a birdie character would be like. Which, Callie, do oh, you know? It's been a while. Je- Callie, do you know Jeeves and Worcester? I don't believe I do. Okay. Yeah, just, you know, the befuddled gentleman. I will try. Oh, befuddled gentleman. Good morning. Rory said. Now, I'm not really what you would call an interviewing expert, but let's have a go and see what you're all about. You can't be worse than the last three blighters. If I seem out of sorts, it's uh, because my well-meaning but meddling aunt Primrose has wagered that I would be unable to quit smoking, which I have done successfully. Indeed, I have quit smoking every day for the past two weeks. Today makes two hours in a row that I've gone without. But she seems to feel that she's won the wager. Tell me, what is your opinion of interfering ants? That was his first question to you when you met five years ago. How did you respond? <laughs> How about this is Emily's choice, then? Oh, my. But there are several good ones. <laughs> I don't know. If, if we really want to go, uh, like, Jeeves and Worcester, the Indeed Sir <laughs> seems that, like a good option. That is in character, yes. <laughs> so let's go with that. Yeah. I said, Indeed Sir? 
Rory paused to see if you intended to continue, and seeing that you were remaining respectfully silent, charged forward. Very much in... Oh, sorry. That's... <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to happen a lot, isn't it? <sighs> Very much indeed, I should say. I'm in my prime, and she need not make idle wagers with me to influence my behavior. Rory looked around for a pen to make a note, and, finding none, took a drink. Now, let me see. What did you say your name was? I suppose I should have asked for that first. I imagine it says somewhere in your letter, but I seem to have misplaced it. Oh, we get all the name options if we're non-binary. Uh, do we want one of these, or do we want to come up with a name? I want to make up a name. Okay, that'll just be, you know, right in. Yeah! But of course, and what is your first name? We are usually addressed by our last name, by the way. I, I have a proposal. Since me and Emily have probably, you know, no, no idea what an appropriate name would be for this, we should each come up with one half of the name, and then whether it goes together or not is kind of irrelevant. Okay, I have a word in mind. Do you have a word or name in mind? Yes. Okay, let's say them both at the same time, and then laugh, and then after we're done laughing, we, we decide which one should go first. Okay. okay. Three, two, one. Cotswold. Crumpet. Cotswold <laughs> <laughs> and Crumpet. Which is like, the first name in that? I like that it alliterates. Yeah, that was totally <laughs> unplanted. Uh, unplanted, what am I saying? Unplanned. Yeah, I just thought of like a random British sounding place name. I think Crumpet Cotswold stands better than Cotswold Crumpet. Yeah, I like yeah. Cotswold as a surname. Who named us Crumpet, though? You, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, our parents must yeah. have. Yeah. My given name is Crumpet, you said. However, naturally, I am accustomed to being addressed by my surname, which is... Oswald. <laughs> that was the spelling, right? Yeah. Okay. Very good, very good, Cotswold. Rory said. Now, let me see. There are particular sorts of questions one asks in this situation. What would those questions be? Let me think. Oh, yes. What would you say your best quality is? Now we choose our skills. I, I kind of like the liberal arts action or answer because that, that sounds like liberal arts college. This may come in handy. Rory said, pondering. An apt literary quote, qu an apt literary quotation. I was like, quotient? No. Um, no, that's what I'm doing. He's confused. He would say that. That might be something he says. I'll go with it. An apt well, literary quotient can often impress. Can you quote a, a bit of literature off the cuff? Of course, you said, clearing your throat. Celery raw develops the jaw, but celery stewed is more quietly chewed. Rory applauded quietly. Oh, very fine. Shakespeare, isn't that? No, Ogden Nash, I believe. Hmm, excellent. Rory thought for a moment. Ah, I have a firecracker of a question. This is a real tough one, so prepare yourself. What is your worst quality? Be honest now. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> a tendency to become overly emotionally oh. involved with my employer, and I just cannot hide my emotions when they arise. Yes, yes. We should do that one. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> I gestured theatrically as we as I read that, by the way. I was picturing that. Yeah, you know, hand to the forehead. Tossing my head back. Ah. Said Rory. Ah. He said again, looking at you and then looking away, and then looking back at you. Oh. Emotionally involved. I'm afraid so. I feel it's best to let you know the potential pitfalls at once. 
Ben Murray laughed and slapped his knee. You're joking, of course. I should have seen it at once. Emotionally involved. What a scream. Cotswold, you are a riot. Murray briefly considered and then stood. Well, I feel like I've gotten a fairly good sense of your personality. Now, I seem to remember that you have a fascinating hobby. Tell me about it while I put my shoes on. Indeed, sir. Begin before entering service, I developed an interest that might have some slight bearing on this position, which I thought worthy of mention. What was your fascinating hobby? I like the lion tamer a lot. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, oh, a lion tamer. <laughs> All I, of I these wanna... hobbies will come in useful. I want to tame lions. Okay, as a child, I was a performer in a traveling circus, a lion tamer. Simba. As a child, I had some experience taming savage lions as a member of a traveling circus, you said. You may have heard of me. I worked under the name of... <laughs> 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 so this is where our name came from. Beautiful. I was just reading so smoothly and then suddenly I saw what I was supposed to say. <laughs> We're from the circus, that's why. That's why the name. I worked under the... I have to say this with my unflappable voice, however. I worked under the name of Crumpet the Unfearing. Oh, perfect. The name does not immediately ring a bell. I think it would if you'd ever heard it before. Yeah, really. <laughs> How could you forget Crumpet the Unfearing? But it strikes me that lion taming skills may come in handy with my dear Aunt Primrose. Rory mused. Oh. I may have mentioned her earlier. Rory paused for a moment with eyes closed, seemed to make a decision, and then stood up. I say, I'm going to pop around to the tobacconist for a moment. It's just downstairs. Make yourself comfortable. I won't be a moment. Rory was out for ten minutes. What did you do in that ten minutes that made him hire you at once? choices. I think I know which would be, which you would like the most, though, given your asthma. I, I have a favorite in that regard, but I think it's Emily's turn to pick, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think I will choose that one, the third one. My asthma thanks you, and the world thanks you. And also, I mean, Rory, he's trying to quit, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be good boy, Rory. I followed him and convinced him not to purchase cigarettes. You followed Mr. Wintermint and intercepted him just outside the tobacconist's. I say, Cotswold, Rory said. It's wonderful to see you again and all that, but I think there may have been a crossing of the wires. You were to remain until I returned, not follow me through thick and thin. I understand, sir, and yet I could not help making a suggestion. Oh? You see, sir. How did you get Rory to resist temptation? I think the literary quotation sounds pretty stellar. Yeah. <laughs> Consider, sir, that temptation comes to meet and master and make a person crouch beneath its foot. That's very nice, Rory said. One of your own? Ah, no, sir. The po poet Robert Browning. That Browning certainly knew his stuff. A smoker, was he? I believe he may have indulged from time to time. And yet able to master temptation. Well, nobody shall say that Rory Wintermint is less able than Robert Browning. Back to my flat, Cotswold. You're hired. Very good, sir. And now, five years later... What? Five <laughs> years? We've been in his employ for five years. So I'll just take a peek at our stats now that we have stats. <laughs> oh my god. Look. We're so cultured. Look. It's soothing. We have a name. Trumpet <laughs> Cotswold at your service. Okay, we haven't really done anything to get a reputation, but our relationship with Rory went up. We have 25 monies. Yeah. And we're soothing. I Yeah, we're a very soothing person. That's why we were able to, you know, get the lions to chill out. Yeah. So soothing. Laden tray in hand, you open the door to the suffering Rory's bedroom. Your tray, sir. 
Well, thank heavens, Cotswold. You are a celestial messenger bearing tidings of great joy unto me. <laughs> you place the tray on the bed, and Rory attempts to heave himself to a sitting position, but then flops back on the pillow, clutching his head. I am not well, Cotswold. Rory intones. I will likely die before sundown. If I die, I leave you half my kingdom. Very good, sir. But before that dreadful event, I wonder if you might care for a beverage? Ah, the soothing tea, Rory says, lifting the cup to his nose and inhaling deeply. Just the I, stuff. I just pictured him drinking the tea through his nose. I, I just want you to know that. Yes, that's how that's how you do it. I, I mean, see, oh, I see well, nothing that's con- wrong my whole life. I see that's n- upper class Britain for you. Nothing that Dang. contradicts this. Yeah. <laughs> Not even common sense. I mean, like, common sense is fancy people drink tea through their nose, apparently. I don't I, think I this is a character who has common sense anyway. Oh. Okay. Just the stuff. Rory pops the antacid tablets into his mouth, takes a draft of tea, and then sighs deeply. This is wonderful, Cutsold. I feel the warring armies in my midsection preparing an armistice as we speak. Tell me, Cotswold, how does one little tablet soothe me so? I could not hazard an explanation, sir. Rory suddenly makes a sour face and claps his hand to his forehead. It's today Thursday. I had completely forgotten. Aunt Primrose is coming to dinner tonight. She rang up the other day and, like an ass, I said, very well. We'll have to work swiftly, Cotswold. He leaps up and you whip the tray away so that its contents don't spill. Rory rushes to the vast wardrobe and begins to pull clothes out of it haphazardly. As you well know, Cotswold, thanks to the proviso in my father's will, my Aunt Primrose holds control over all of my money whilst I remain unmarried. (laughs) Now, this is not usually a problem, as Aunt Primrose sends off my monthly checks as steady as can be, but this month, I seem to have dug myself into a bit of a trench, debt-wise. How so, sir? It's a funny thing, actually. I was absolutely certain of this one particular horse in the third race. They called him Surefire. Can they do that? Isn't that false advertising? At any rate, I spent the whole monthly check on Surefire, and uh, it was not to be. And now the bill collectors are coming around and demanding that I render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, as the fellow says. We may have some small risk of having thuggish debt collectors arrive with lead pipes. Maybe most distressing, sir. Most distressing, sir, to be sure. Distressing is the right word for it, mutters Rory. And the only way to solve this matter is with a great deal of money from Aunt Primrose, delivered to me post-haste. I see, you say, considering carefully. If I might make a suggestion, your aunt might be more inclined to be generous with her funds were we to offer her an exquisite dinner. She is known to appreciate a hearty meal. Hmm, says Rory, mulling this over. Get her in a right jolly mood with refreshments, and then touch her for the money to the extent possible. I think we should be able to handle that. Now let's see about some clothes. Rory considers and rejects a number of articles of clothing one by one. Cotswold, where on earth is my lavender plus fours with the checks? I want to wear my spats with it. You take a moment to consider your answer. I kind of like the first one. (laughs) I took the liberty of discarding that outfit with yesterday's rubbish, sir. May I suggest an outfit less... Sudden in its effect, I say calmly. (laughs) Harsh. Sure. (laughs) You, you you're not, you're not convinced, Ben. (laughs) Too late. (laughs) The die is cast. I thought it was funny. It is funny. (laughs) (laughs) You discarded it. It was essential, sir. I would have been derelict in my duty if I had allowed you to be seen in public wearing it. It is my responsibility and pleasure to see to it that you are immaculate in your appearance. The outfit in question, while certainly appropriate for novelty purposes, perhaps, did not belong in the well-dressed gentleman's wardrobe. Rory goggles at you for a moment. 
Oh, very well. I acquiesced to your obviously superior taste and judgment this time. So what do you recommend? May I suggest the waist seam coat and white flannel trousers? Oh, have it your way. Thank you, sir. I'm guessing that wasn't the option uh, to make Rory like you. Probably not, although I don't remember exactly what does and what doesn't. I mean, pretty much everything has a small effect on stats in some way. It's not like you can't displease him once or twice and still have him like you overall. This is true. Finally dressed, Rory strolls into the living room and slumps onto the easy chair, plucking up a book from the end table. We have plans to make, Cotswold. Dinner must be cooked, and I must finish this god-awful book. Rory holds the book up. Releasing the hidden potential of your hitherto unawakened mind in Twelve Easy Steps by Professor Clarence Q. Hickory. It's my opinion that this Professor Hickory is an ass of the First Order. Listen to this excerpt. Would someone else want to do the excerpt? <laughs> Callie, put on your professor voice. <clears throat> There are several primal mechanisms by which emotional energies that lie dormant, perhaps suppressed by the desire to cleave to social norms, may be brought forward and thus integrated into one's personality. However, in order for psychoanalytic intervention to be effective, the patient must regress through a series of archetypical stages to shed or replay four psychodramatic stages, to recapitulate one's phylogeny via ontogeny, as Ernest Haeckel has demonstrated. Rory looks up. Why Aunt Primrose felt I need to read this drivel is beyond me. It seems to be in no particular order whatsoever. Just a series of words, helter-skelter across the page. She's certain to quiz me on it. I need to have some semblance of an answer. Does it mean a thing to you at all? I, I think I like Aid Rory in bluffing his way through a discussion of the book. Okay, I was just going to say, what do you think is the least bad idea? I, I think that we can just, like... I mean, if we're failing together, at least we're together, right? Let's see what happens. That is a troubling situation, sir. However, it is my experience that casual conversation rarely requires a full reading of a book. No. No. One must only have perhaps two statements that can be used to respond to any given query. How can it be that I've never heard of such a thing? Quickly now, teach me these statements. I wait with bated breath. When faced with a query, simply say, Ah, yes. And then tap your chin thoughtfully, as if pondering. <laughs> that will buy you time, and very probably, the questioner will see your response as thoughtful and wise. It seems somehow insufficient, Rory says. What if she presses the point? In that case, you respond by simply crossing your arms and replying, So they say, but I remain skeptical. That will leave her nonplussed, and she will drop the line of questioning. I trust you, Cotswold. I shall jot those phrases and gestures down to ensure I don't forget them. Thank you, sir. Now I should go prepare dinner. One thing I should also note, you don't have to succeed at things for this to be fun. It's often more fun if you don't. <laughs> Tying on your apron, you step into the kitchen and begin to consider your options for dinner. You make a quick calculation, taking into account the ingredients at your disposal and the time you have remaining before the arrival of the notoriously punctual Aunt Primrose. As you see it, you have three options. Aunt Primrose's favorite dish is veal ragout, is that French? Ragout, ragout. yes. Okay. With truffles and apricot compote, but she is finicky about it, and it is not a simple dish. You could also make roast beef au jus, with haricot vert, which is certainly that simpler. That just means green beans. Haricot vert just means green beans, by the way. <laughs> I did recognize green. <laughs> I have seen pretentious restaurants try to put haricot vert on their menu, and then it's just like, 
people are like, oh, I wonder what this is. This sounds fancy. And I'm just like, it's green beans. It's Does, green beans, I promise. And then it's like they bring it out and it's like, oh, they, you were right, Callie, darn it. Does au jus also mean something less impressive? With I mean, juice. It, it's in juices. Yeah. Like oh. meat juice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Which is certainly simpler, although less impressive. Finally, yes. in a pinch, you could make a cheese omelette or no. omelette de fromage and shave les truffles onto it. Aunt Primrose might be unimpressed, but at least it's quickly cooked and difficult to make badly. What should you cook? I like the roast beef au jus because I feel like we might goof up the things she likes and make her even more mad. Okay. The roast beef is clearly the best choice. While it isn't Aunt Primrose's favorite, it is a significantly less fussy meal to cook, and as you know all too well, a poorly cooked meal would be certain to put Aunt Primrose in a truly grouchy mood. Bear this in mind when vo voicing her. It okay. would be wiser to cook a simpler, more dependable meal. You begin to gather the ingredients for the roast beef. Wait a moment. What about dessert? Oh, no. We went slightly simpler with the entree. I know the port poached pear tart with homemade raspberry streaked creme fraiche. Sounds fancy. It does. Yeah, sure. I mean, and the thing, I, the theory I have on desserts is it's like if all the ingredients you put in it taste delicious, it, it's pretty hard to mess up, even if it doesn't turn out exactly like you want it to. Like, it it could what if it, awful. it what yes. if it causes your microwave to explode? Well, then that'd well, be bad. But then that's bad. But usually, you don't make desserts in a microwave. Good thing they weren't invented yet. Yes. For the listening audience, this is a reference to a microwave incident that happened in somebody else's house recently. Wow, Ben, you're really being cryptic about this. No, I, I blew up. I, I mean, okay, that sounds like I did it deliberately. No, I had some delicious Mexican food. I had like a quesadilla and some refried beans leftovers. Put it on a tempered glass plate, which is microwave safe, mind you. Put it in for a minute, 30 seconds. Not even 40 seconds later, it exploded. And I had glass encrusted cheese all over my microwave. Which is exactly what you should serve to Aunt Primrose. No! That would kill her! <laughs> and then we'd get the money. No. Yay! <laughs> Cheat ending. I am so disappointed that this route was not included. <laughs> I will have to suggest it. Oh, God. A fancy, complex dessert will be just the thing to mollify Aunt Primrose, and a tart is both visually pleasing and a tasty conclusion to the meal. You square your shoulders, take a deep breath, and begin to cook dinner, as Rory paces back and forth in the living room, gnawing on a fingernail and looking out the window tensely. You pick up the knife and... What would you say is your general approach to cooking? I think if we want to do good, we, we should probably go play it safe, you know? We don't want to do the... The slapdash, certainly. I'd say maybe uh, comforting familiarity would, would probably be safe. Careful attention to a pro popular recipe, ensuring a comforting familiarity. You pick up the knife, and with no small measure of precision, you begin to finely mince fresh herbs, sorting them into carefully organized piles. You then measure out all of the ingredients and place all necessary utensils within easy reach. After a great deal of hard work, you have a dinner to be proud of. Your roast beef looks just like the roast beef in the cookbook you referred to as you worked. It may have taken you a while, but you are confident in your results. You smile Working with... together to achieve outstanding results. We're doing this alone. Oh. Okay, you smile with satisfaction as all the ingredients come together to make a feast that is certain to please. My word, Cotswold, cries Rory, peeking into the kitchen. You've outdone yourself. The aroma alone is feast enough. 
Hordes of angry men, women, and children from three blocks distant must be fetching battering rams to force entry and take a seat at my table. <laughs> As Rory watches, you plate the roast beef with enviable precision and add the garnish per the recipe. And dessert, too, Rory exclaims. Aunt Primrose is bound to practically levitate off her seat with delight and whimsy. Well, 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 